The Leaf Mini portable solar panel only weighs 5.5 ounces. It's cheaper than most power banks and it's lighter than most power banks that will give you forever power if you're in the sun. But will it deliver power for your adventures? Stick around, we'll find out. All right, so let's talk about how we're gonna test this out in the field. So this Leaf Mini has a five watt output, so it's not like, you know, super powerful, um, but you know, who knows? This might do the trick for us, and that's what we're here to test today. All right, um, I have these little straps that I put on the back of my backpack, and this sits on the top of my backpack. If you put it on the side or on the front or any place else, it's not gonna get the sun exposure. So the best place is the top of the pack. Um, it's not perfect, but it's the best of all options. So we're gonna leave this on there while we hike all day. And then maybe when we stop for breaks, we'll put this out and we'll angle it, you know, toward the sun like it should be. Um, or uh, when we're at camp, if the sun is still out, we'll go ahead and place this and align it well. And that's the routine that we'll do. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook up my 10,000 milliamp hour anchor battery bank. And then what we'll do is we'll check at the beginning and the end of each day just to see how it did. And that'll be our test. Now this anchor, it doesn't give me an exact percentage of charge, but it has four lights on it. And each one of those lights means something, right? The first light is up to 25% charge. The second light is from 25 to 50% charge. And the third is up to 75 and the fourth is 100%. So that'll give us a rough idea. It's not an exact science, but you know, it'll do for what we're trying to test here. So let's talk about a few things that solar panels require in order for you to get optimal power out of them. One thing is the angle to the sun, right? You gotta be 90 degrees, you know, facing the sun as much as possible. Uh, now you can be less than that. It just means that the photovoltaic cells won't work as optimally as designed. So get as close as you can to 90 degrees to the sun. The second thing is um, no obstructions. It's got to be you know, direct full sunlight in order for you to get optimal power out of these things. So any kind of shade, any kind of cloud cover, you know, anything but direct sunlight is going to reduce the power out of solar panels. And then the third thing is uh, the size of the panel, right? The bigger the panel, the more power it's going to produce and uh, the faster it's going to charge your devices. Of course, larger solar panels are going to weigh more. So there's going to be a trade-off. Uh, if you need fast power and a lot of power, you're going to have to take a larger solar panel. If you're like on this trip where you don't need to have a whole lot of power, uh, a, a smaller panel like this with um, just a small charging device like a 10,000 milliamp hour battery might suit you just fine. So those are the kind of things you should be aware of. Now you're gonna ask, if I don't have direct sunlight, if, if I'm not angled at the sun, if I have a small polar solar panel, will this thing actually even work? And that's what this trip is about. So let's go on and let's get with testing. I wanted you first to understand, you know, kind of the dynamics and the physics and the you know, technical capabilities and requirements of solar panels before you get started. And maybe that'll help you make a smarter decision on if you're gonna carry a solar panel, when you're gonna carry a solar panel, and what kind of solar panel you're gonna carry. All right, so let's get to testing. Okay, so how did this do on the first day? Well, uh, let's talk about the sun and how much sun we had and how much shade and, and all that. So um, I started out at seven in the morning and uh, it was uh, partly cloudy throughout the day. And I was walking through a forest about maybe half the time. So I would say that um, this got maybe, uh, well, I started at seven and then I ended around five o'clock. So we could say that this got, you know, from 30 to maybe 50% sunshine uh, during the day. Let's just 
rough shot it um, because when you're in the trees you get shade and when you're of course under clouds you don't get the full sun and so that's going to affect the charge and it sat right on top of my pack and i stopped for a, a few short breaks maybe five or ten minutes but every time i took a break i made sure this was pointing you know directly at the sun when i was taking a break so that was the course of the day so i plugged this in i had this on top of my pack and let's check the lights and I gotta find the button <laughs> all four lights five watts about a 10 hour hiking day with 30 to 50 percent semi-optimal sunlight and it charged it from zero to 100. Um, I've, I've tried a lot of different solar panels and um, even five watt ones and they didn't I just don't recall them doing so well I don't know so tonight what I'm going to do so far so good yeah tonight what I'm going to do is I'm going to charge up my um, uh, my Garmin because it's been burning all day and I'll top off my phone because I've been using that throughout the day and then we'll take a measurement and see how many dots we have left and then we'll Rinse some repeat for tomorrow. Okay, so last night when I was charging my devices, my Garmin was at 67%, so I charged it up to 100. Then my phone was at 85%, so I charged that up to 100. Then I noticed my headlamp was uh, just a little bit undercharged, so I charged that up too. Uh, the result was it didn't go down. But obviously there was some power use out of this battery bank. So I'm going to uh, connect it up just like I did yesterday. Okay, day two went pretty much the same as day one. We had partly cloudy skies. I was exposed for a good part of the day. Uh, we, I didn't spend that much time on trail though. It's uh, 2.30, 7.30 to 2.30, so a few hours less than yesterday. Uh, but if you remember, um, this had four dots on it in the morning. And so we wouldn't expect anything different right now. So there's your, there's your four dots. But, you know, but it did use up some energy charging my, uh, my Garmin and my phone and my light. So uh, whatever charge that it used for that uh, was resupplied in here. So um, we have one more day of this. I don't know that it's worth uh, going through this exercise again. Day one was really the tell all about how this uh, five watt solar panel was going to perform and I think it did it did very well. Let's run over a few things that we learned Okay, one of the things that we learned is that I think that this trip was Pretty normal, right? You're not going to get perfect Sun every day that you're out backpacking or rarely, right? Uh, so I like that, you know, this the weather didn't cooperate exactly with us and um so that's one thing. Uh, the other thing is, is that, you know, this is mounted in an imperfect position for most of the day. So we should expect a, no matter what solar pa panel you use, you should expect, expect a less than optimal output throughout the day. So I began to think today as I was walking down the trail, what, when, what circumstances would I use this in? And I'm on a three day trip. If I don't want to carry a large battery, I don't have to. This 10K will do just fine. In fact, if the weather conditions are similar to today, it could be longer than three days. It could be an extended period of time, as long as the weather holds out. On a lot of long trips, I see backpackers carrying multiple large batteries because it might be a week before they get to their next, um, their next place where they can charge their batteries. And you spend, you know, hours. Sometimes um, you need to spend a zero in a town in order to charge up everything. So that might save you that time or that chore while you're in town. Now, solar panels have been kind of dissed over the past, uh, for as long as I've been hiking. 
not too many people really enjoy or think it's worth carrying solar panels. Um, I think part of the reason for that is because they haven't seen real tests and maybe they haven't tested on you know some of the more modern solar panels which are a little bit more efficient. So are they giving a fair shot? I don't think so but you know you be the judge. You figure out what you want to do, what chances you want to take, what risks that you want to take on while you're out there because you know the weatherman isn't right all the time so so it's always a risk taking yourself because you you and no one has control of the weather so um there's always a underlying risk about taking these out on the trail with you let me know your thoughts down below what do you think about solar panels um have my recent tests and all the stuff i've been doing with solar panels maybe change your mind a little bit or give you some better insights maybe you have some other experiences some things that you've done that maybe you can share with us so we'd love to hear that down in the comments below Appreciate you, and remember, go live like you want. Hey, this is David on Earth. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment down below. And go to the website for some deals on gear. All right, see you on the trail.